I guess we're a little early. No saint stains alone. What? No saint stains alone. Every time I come here, these lines come to me, God knows from where. It sometimes takes me weeks, even years, to figure out what the hell they mean. Did you ever read any of the books that I sent you? No, I'll tell you, not since you stopped thinking about coming back to help me with my speeches. Did you ever read any of the speeches I sent you? Well, I tried. I mean, you know, the old attention span is not what it used to be. That's true, mine either. I don't have any attention anymore for anything that's not specific. Poetry just confuses me. Yeah, politics. Politics confuses everybody. Including its practitioners. But I know what No Saint Stands Alone means. Oh, yeah? What? It's the essence of my profession. Because between every politician and his own point of view, there's always three fat cats, two cack lobbyists, half a dozen microphones. No man is an island. Entire of itself, every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. Therefore, never send to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. Can't you just feel the place watching you? Yeah, it makes you feel pretty small. Yeah, I was supposed to. The individual in the human body was supposed to feel small, dwarfed, denied all independent existence. We lost some of the sense of being all one. But we got our freedom. That's not a bad trade-off, really. I don't know. Still don't know if it's worth it. We haven't lost more than we've gained. All I ever hear anybody talk about today is themselves. I wrote a poem once. It's uh, titled, The Stones Speak, I Am Silent. Well, at least you're free to think what you want and do what you can about it. Think of the poor guy who had to carry the stones up the hill to build this place. He didn't have any say in his life at all. Or try running for office someday. You won't feel so bad. Someone else sets the agenda. Someone else sets the schedule. Somebody else decides what you can say and what you better not say. Talk about losing yourself. People have been known to forget their own names. Maybe you're too smart to be president. Yeah, a television correspondent told me that once. What'd you say? I got a little steamed. I said American voters want their leaders to be dumber than they are. They figure they'll do less harm that way. And that it's an expensive form of cynicism. Said that on TV? Yep. You're not so smart after all. We go through here. It's up here. After you. for hundreds, hundreds of years, since before the beginning of modern times. Yeah, but this is different from the kind of time you were talking about before, sunrise to sunset, Sabbath to Sabbath, isn't it? This is, uh, this is mechanical time, isn't it? You bet, you bet it is, you bet. I sometimes think that this clock, this machine, is what constitutes humanity's first real break from the world of nature. Wouldn't you say so? Hello? The clock did much more than that. It became the model of the cosmos. And then they mistook the model for the real thing. People got the idea that nature was just a giant clock, not a living organism, but a machine. That's exactly what I've been trying to tell this lunkhead, exactly, word for word. Maybe you recognize him. Jack Edwards, and you're? Uh, Sonia Hoffman. I think I've heard your name somewhere. Yeah, maybe in a couple of hundred news broadcasts. He was a candidate for the U.S. presidency in the primaries. Oh, I vaguely remember. See, I'm not a voter. Most Americans don't vote either. 
I do know who you are. Me? You know who I am? I doubt it. I... You're Thomas Harriman, the poet. Well, yes, I am, but uh, wait a minute. Let me get this straight. You recognize me, a poet whose latest work sold all of 12,000 copies, but you do not recognize this gentleman who uh, was a presidential candidate in America? My God, woman, what's happened to your values? What do you do? I'm a scientist, and we do occasionally read poetry. As a matter of fact, I'm doing a lot of it these days. I'm on a sort of sabbatical. I'm an ex-physicist, an ex-American resident, an ex-voter. Ex-wife? This is very upsetting. Why don't intelligent people like yourself bother to vote? Well, forgive me, you politicians make it so hard. Uh, the ideas expressed by most of you, right and left, seem to me as antique and mechanical as that old clock. What's that supposed to mean? Well, if I was to explain that, I'd have to go all the way back to Descartes, if you remember him. Yeah. To be or not to be? I think, therefore, I am. Yeah, well, we both went to college, yeah. Well, Descartes was the primary architect of the view that sees the world as a clock. A mechanistic view that still dominates most of the world today, and it seems to me, especially you politicians. Mechanistic? Is that a real word? Mechanistic? Mechanical? Mechanics? Yeah, it's a good word. Mechanistic, as if nature functions like a clock. You take it apart, reduce it to a number of small, simple pieces, easy to understand, analyze them, put them all back together again, and then you understand the whole. Isn't that what's known as scientific thinking, Miss Hoffman? Really, what you call the mechanistic view, isn't that what the scientific method's all about? Is it? Well, I don't think so, but I'd like to kind of hear from the physicist, Jack. All right, I'm sorry. Please continue. Well. You're right, in a way, Mr. Um... Jack. Call me Jack. <laughs> OK, Jack. You are right, in a sense. But it wasn't always so. Not before the cart. When he introduced such thinking, it amounted to a revolutionary break with the church. He said, I don't need the pope to tell me how the world functions. I can find that out for myself. Because to me, the world is just a machine. And then he became fascinated with clockworks and made the clock into a central metaphor. He said, I consider the human body as nothing but a machine. A healthy man is like a well-made clock. A sick man is like an ill-made clock. Well, the metaphor seems a little clumsy now, but it works, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, yeah, so successfully that Scientists came to believe that all living things, plants, animals, us, are nothing but machines. And that's the fallacy. It carried over into everything, arts, politics. I don't know. It seems to me that most people don't even remember who Descartes was. I'm sorry. I guess I just don't follow you. But he'd like to. If you could just break it down into 30-second media bites, that's more what he's used to. Very funny. All right, what is it that I don't recognize? What's so bad about Descartes? But there's nothing bad about Descartes. In fact, I think Descartes is wonderful. He was a godsend to the 17th century. But times have changed since then. We need a new way of understanding life. That pendulum, for example, has long since been replaced by a tiny quartz crystal. And these magnificent hand-forged wheels <laughs> turned into a microchip the, the size of my thumbnail. That's how far modern science has left mechanistic thinking behind. But you politicians, you seem to have that clockwork still ticking in your head. Keep on going, Sonia. Don't stop. Who knows? You may just have that vital piece of information that we Pauls, venal and stupid as we are, have been missing out on all along. Well, there you go, thinking in terms of pieces.